Welcome to the Battle of the Conferences. Ever wondered which conference can put together the best NFL roster? That's what we're going to find out. We take the best players from every team in each conference, build an NFL roster, and pit those teams against each other in a bracket format. The last conference standing will be crowned champion, which means absolutely nothing. Let the battle begin. Here we go. Today we're looking at the Big Ten versus the Double AC. Obviously, the Big Ten to the left, Double AC to the right. And now, with the draft having happened, it's worth saying no drafted players will be in this. Only current NFL players, or rather, they're technically now current NFL players, but anybody that played last year. And we kick it off with the quarterbacks. And I should say here for the American Athletic Conference that they could have had some more quarterbacks. That would have made them look better. Case Keenum out of Houston, Paxton Lynch out of Memphis. You know, would be some decent backup quarterbacks there behind Blake Bortles out of Central Florida. However, it doesn't really matter because the Big Ten starts with Tom Brady, finishes with Russell Wilson, and in the middle you have Drew Brees. There's nobody competing with that whatsoever. Of course, there the point goes to the Big Ten. We then move on to the running backs. And the double AC putting up a good fight here. Latavius Murray out of Central Florida, Matt Forte out of Tulane. Those are some good players. However, Big Ten, Le'Veon Bell out of Michigan State, Jordan Howard out of Indiana, Ezekiel Elliott out of Ohio State, and there's guys we couldn't even fit on the team. Another clear point again going to the Big Ten. Then we go on to the fullback. This is usually where the smaller conferences can steal one back and it's looking good again today. Now I did end up leaving out some fullbacks. Michael Burton for example could have gone on the Big Ten. Now did I do it on purpose? I don't think so. Andy Janovich out of Nebraska against Anthony Sherman out of Connecticut. I think there the point does go to the double AC. They take their first point. Then we move on to the next round and it's the tight ends and Big Ten has CJ Fedorowicz out of Iowa, Jesse James out of Penn State, Vernon Davis out of Maryland. And they go up against Travis Kelsey out of Cincinnati, Charles Clay out of Tulsa, and Brent Selleck also out of Cincinnati. And now we go head to head with these. CJ Fedorovitz versus Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey wins by a decent amount, but CJ Fedorovitz still very good. Jesse James against Charles Clay. Again, I would say Charles Clay. Vernon Davis against Brent Selleck. Vernon Davis wins, but I think the difference of those other two is big enough that the AAC takes another point here again, goes two in a row, and we're actually all tied. So then the wide receivers, and this one could be close. Let's start with the Big Ten. Alan Robinson out of Penn State, Stefan Diggs out of Maryland, Michael Thomas, Ohio State. Then below them, Terrell Pryor out of Ohio State, Mohamed Sanu out of Rutgers, Eric Decker out of Minnesota. But for the AAC, the double AC, Call them what you want. They've got Brandon Marshall out of Central Florida. They've got Emmanuel Sanders out of SMU. Cole Beasley out of SMU. Kamar Aiken and Brashad Perriman out of Central Florida as well. In terms of starters, I think that Brandon Marshall on par, maybe just a little bit less than Alan Robinson actually now. Emmanuel Sanders, probably better than Stefan Diggs. Cole Beasley, probably not better than Michael Thomas, but he is better in the slot. So in terms of starters, you could even argue that double AC takes this one, but you've got to consider depth, especially when the depth is this good as it is with the Big Ten, and Big Ten takes the point. So then the final offensive group, and <laughs> probably the most obvious one, the offensive line, and it's just completely stacked for the Big Ten. Let's go through it. Joe Thomas out of Wisconsin, Taylor Lewan out of Michigan, Taylor Decker out of Ohio State at left tackle. Left guard, Richie Incognito out of Nebraska, Jack Muhor out of Ohio State, Roger Saffold out of Indiana. Center, Travis Frederick out of Wisconsin, Matt Slauson out of Nebraska, Spencer Long out of Nebraska, right guard Marshall Yander out of Iowa, Kevin Zeitler out of Wisconsin, Brandon Scherf out of Iowa, right tackle Jack Conklin from Michigan State, Brian Bulaga out of Iowa, and Riley Reef out of Iowa. That is a stacked, stacked group they go up against. Kelvin Beecham at left tackle out of SMU. A very strong left guard group there. Josh Sitton out of Central Florida. Ronald Leary out of Memphis. Jason Kelsey out of Cincinnati. And then the right side again, Central Florida. Justin McCray, right guard, and Jar Reed at right tackle. Obviously, there is no competition here. Maybe you could argue if it was left guard versus left guard that the AAC takes a point. But outside of that... No chance whatsoever. Big Ten, an absolute offensive line powerhouse, takes the point. So that takes us on to defense and the double AC. Once looking at a 2-2 tie is now looking down the barrel of a 4-2 deficit. 
Let's see if they can pick up any more points here on defense. Let's start, of course, with the defensive line. And, well, Big Ten have got it in the bag. But let's go through the players. We've got J.J. Watt out of Wisconsin, Mike Daniels out of Iowa, and Brandon Graham out of Michigan at right end. Defensive tackle, Ndomukun Sue out of Nebraska, Kawan Shaw out of Purdue, Alan Branch out of Michigan, and a bunch more I couldn't fit in. Left end, Joey Bosa out of Ohio State, Cameron Wake out of Penn State, Cameron Hayward out of Ohio State again. And that goes up against, you know, what is almost a perfect 3-4 line, and it's the system they'd have to play with these players. We've got Jason Pierre-Paul out of South Florida, we've got Linval Joseph out of East Carolina, Dontari Poe out of Memphis, Shamar Stephen out of Connecticut as well, and then Mohamed Wilkerson out of Temple, Derek Wolf out of Cincinnati. Like I said, a good 3-4 line, but doesn't even compare to just the supreme talent of starters and the depth of the Big Ten. Another point goes to the Big Ten. So, of course, we do inside and outside linebackers separately, and we're going to give the points separately, but we're just going to look at them as a group here to get this out of the way a little bit quicker. So let's take a look at the AAC. Aaron Lynch out of South Florida, outside linebacker. Tahir Whitehead, we have to push him inside out of Temple. Alandon Roberts out of Houston. And then Connor Bowen out of Cincinnati at left outside linebacker. And they go up against outside linebackers of Sean Lee, Tom Bahali out of Penn State. And then on the other side, Levante David out of Nebraska. Wintney Merciless out of Illinois. Ryan Kerrigan out of Purdue. You've got Ryan Shazier out of Ohio State. And then Navarro Bowman and Paul Puzlizny out of Penn State in the middle. They just cannot take those. Both points go to the Big Ten. Then we come on to the cornerbacks. And I've looked at these before. And I'm really struggling to find the winner here. But let's go through it. So, Big Ten have got Vontae Davis out of Illinois. they got Bradley Roby out of Ohio State. And then Eli Apple out of Ohio State as well. We've got playing our nickel. Then Micah Hyde here as a cornerback. Obviously a nickel guy. More of a safety out of Iowa. Nolan Carroll out of Maryland. And then coming up against AJ Boy out of Central Florida. Tavon Young out of Temple. Darius Butler out of Connecticut. Sterling Moore out of SMU and William Jackson out of Houston and the one thing that I think gives the AAC an advantage here is the fact they've got some actual full-time outside cornerbacks on their team whereas most of Big Ten outside of Vontae Davis it's mostly nickels I mean Micah Hyde is exclusively a nickel cornerback Eli Apple Bradley Roby have been making their living there so far Nolan Carroll probably best served there but we've got AJ Boy probably the best outside corner out of all of these players Tavon Young you know is a number two cornerback but also plays on the outside Darius Butler pretty versatile can play well in the nickel and as a safety we've seen now as well. Sterling Moore would obviously do well in the nickel. So the one thing that makes me want to give the point to the double AC is the fact they're probably a little bit better at that we know of right now playing the outside but we've also seen Bradley Roby outside Vontae Davis of course but what I'm going to do for the fun of it because it makes no difference and I think they actually deserve it here deserve the recognition at the very least going to give the point to the double AC it's a couple of outside corners versus just a team of nickel backs we're going to give it to them. Then finally the safety position and you know we could fill this with even more Connecticut players if we were including this year's drafted players, but we're not. So we've got Andrew Adams, Byron Jones, both out of Connecticut, Clayton Geithers out of Central Florida, Kamal Ishmael out of Central Florida, and Tyvon Branch out of Connecticut. So there you go, that's basically two schools providing all of the safeties. The Big Ten are, however, a lot more diverse. We've got Devin McCarty out of Rutgers, Adrian Amos out of Penn State, Ricardo Allen out of Purdue, we've got Malcolm Jenkins out of Ohio State, Sean Davis out of Maryland. I had some hopes for the double AC, but... To be fair, it's not really a competition whatsoever there. Big Ten takes the final point, takes the game, and wins the match. So that gives us our first semi-final matchup, the ACC versus Big Ten. Of course, what we'll look at next time, though, is the SEC versus the Big 12. Pretty much the biggest matchup in this round, the toughest one we're going to see. And finally, after that, we'll get into the ones where we don't know the winner outright. They've obviously been pretty obvious at this point, but the ACC Big Ten... Who knows who will take that? Pac-12 versus whoever the winner out of the SEC Big 12 is will be another interesting one. So pretty much from this point onwards, it's going to be some tough matches with more than just, you know, one or two odd positions like fullback or so going in favor of the losing conference. Congratulations to the Big 10 for this one. And no one expected any different. <laughs>